Hi, this is ACS Blog, and we're with Tom Goldstein, partner at Aiken and Gump, and founder of SCOTUS Blog. Uh, Tom, can you tell us what uh, we can learn from the? What did we learn about the Supreme Court from uh, this term? Well, with 80 different cases, you can draw a lot of different lessons, but for the questions that ACS members care a lot about, the sort of big constitutional issues, I think that we saw that the court remains quite solidly conservative. Justice Kennedy joining with his more conservative colleagues in 11 five to four cases, the most significant cases of the term. And we're seeing an incremental move over a series of cases over a series of years, I think, by the John Roberts-led court to the right. Now, that's not a uniform uh, line of decisions. There were important victories in favor of constitutional rights. Uh, for example, in the area of search and seizure, we saw cases in which Justice Scalia and Justice Thomas, as a matter of principle, actually joined with the left. Uh, so you can't just, you know, caricature the court. But on the, the big issues of the day and the historic issues, uh, the, the trend to the right continues pretty solidly. And uh, would you describe one or a couple of justices as being the most influential at the moment? Well, you... uh, some of the justices are um, ha have really important characteristics. Obviously, Justice Kennedy uh, is the justice most in the center. He's in the majority 92% of the time. 16 of the 23 5-4s over time, roughly four out of five, five to four cases. Uh, sort of in terms of the tone of the court, uh, it really is, I think, John Roberts' court with his leadership, with his incremental uh, steps, not sort of radically moving in terms of precedent. He seems to have gotten a lot more support within the court for that approach. Uh, Justice Scalia and Justice Thomas, as I mentioned, actually sometimes joining the left, where the left actually very rarely uh, will provide a fifth vote to the right. Um, and so it is interesting to see how their conservative principles actually, and on occasion, it's still a very small number of cases, uh, produce uh, a, a more liberal outcome. The, uh, what I think the left on the court, what progressives are really looking for, what they're really interested in is a lot more intellectual energy, perhaps, from the left, uh, fighting the big uh, battles about the future of the Constitution. That's what uh, we uh, uh, are, are really seeing a lot of urgency in favor of. And do you expect uh, Judge Sotomayor to uh, join the court in the next, on the next term? Yeah, I think that Judge Sotomayor's confirmation is all but assured there aren't any serious uh, strikes against her. Uh, there's a strong Democratic majority in the Senate. There's an overwhelming Democratic majority in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, it's obviously a historic nomination with the first Latina. She's got real tremendous credentials, having been a prosecutor, district judge, court of appeals judge, having decided lots and lots of cases, seems to be a very mainstream person. Uh, so we should see her on the bench, not in October, which we, which we normally would expect, but on September 9th, where the court will hear, when it will hear its first case, it moving uh, a critically important campaign finance case from uh, this term uh, probably into the next. Okay, and one, other, one last thing. What are some cases uh, we should be looking, studying, carefully watching next term? Well, we don't have uh, an abortion case, a big race case, a big gay rights case, a huge religion case. We have a small one. But we do have a number of other critically important constitutional questions. We have a big case about the separation of powers arising from the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. We have a big a takings case for the first time in a while, a case about judicial takings called Stop the Beach. Uh, and across an array of issues, we have incremental steps in the law that again could play out. For example, there's a big case about Miranda and exactly what the warnings have to say. So I would say that across a whole range of issues, we already have sort of A minus to B plus cases of importance. But the big case that we'll hear them taking as soon as they get back almost certainly is, does the Second Amendment apply as against the states? Is the Heller decision involving the District of Columbia going to apply to New York and California? Uh, and that really will have a huge impact on uh, state and local gun regulation. Okay. Uh, Mr. Goldstein, thanks for talking to ACS Blog. No, thanks so much. Okay.